sur l'influence de Cartier-Bresson. Well, I first saw him, his work, in a magazine called Verve. One um, jacket was the cover was done by uh, Miro, yeah, yeah. one by Matisse, one by Mayol. It was like that, you see. It was a magnificent magazine, uh, using all kinds of printing devices, color and facsimiles and this and that and everything. And in that, I discovered the Cartier-Bresson pictures of Mexico, in which he was mentioned as Cartier, not Cartier-Bresson, not double-barreled, just Cartier. And uh, I told him that later. And he said, yes, originally I was just my Cartier, and later on I became Cartier-Bresson. And something about the, them struck me as being quite different from any other salon photo photograph that I had seen. They were in very interestingly composed. They were, as he called them, decisive moments. You know, his book was called Decisive Moment. It was shot at a particular moment when things happen to the elements in the picture, in the photo, composed in a certain way, uh, or related to each other in a certain way, which was aesthetically uh, quite new to me and very, very interesting. Very subtle, uh, there was a lot of humor in them and a lot of humanism. I admired the use of light, uh, the times of day in which he shot his pictures. And uh, so, uh, and I, Eventually, the young boy who photographed uh, Pate Panchali, he was only 21 at that time, and no experience of camera work before. He, I showed him the Cartier-Bresson pictures. I told him that this is the kind of uh, texture that I want in my film. This is the kind of, uh, you see the, the available, the use of available light. So we'll try to devise a method whereby we can get this kind of lighting and not the usual studio lighting. One way, of course, is to shoot on location. And Pate Panchali was sure shot uh, uh, largely on location. All the night scenes were shot in the studio, but all the day scenes were shot on location. 